Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about one of my favorite brown pigments, PBR25. I'll show you swatches from several brands, compare it side by side with similar brown pigments like PBR23 and PR101, then explore some mixtures and demonstrate its use in a couple paintings. PBR25 is a light, fast, smooth, transparent, dark-valued reddish brown made from the ingredient benzamidazolone brown, which will be noted as pigment brown 25 on paint labels or color charts. These watercolors are a good example of why it's important to look for a pigment code number instead of a color name while shopping, because each brand calls this something different. Instead of its chemical name, it's often referred to as a made-up name, such as Permanent Brown, Red Brown, Brown Red, Royal Brown, Brown Matter, and My Mary Blue calls theirs Dragon's Blood. It varies slightly between brands, with some looking a little cooler like Mission Gold and some being slightly warmer like Holbein or Rosa Gallery. This could vary a little bit batch to batch, but all are less orange leaning than colors like Burnt Sienna or Red Iron Oxides. My personal favorite brands of PBR25 are from Shinhan, Holbein, or Rosa Gallery. I prefer them because their binder formulas perform particularly well to keep this fine particle pigment controlled in wet washes. This restricted flow allows me to blend a gradient on wet paper and have it dry with my blending brushwork intact. In the largest box on the left of my swatch cards, I place strong color using less water up top, then water it down into a pale, diluted wash towards the bottom. In some brands, this careful attention I paid to making a gradient goes away as the color spreads over the wet paper as it dries. I do a lot of blending on wet paper, so color staying where I put it is important to me as it allows me to paint more precisely. Mission Gold, Daniel Smith, and Renaissance were all a bit harder to control. Despite Mission Gold's relatively low disperse rate, their binder formula allows color to slowly creep across damp paper for a longer period of time. Same thing happens with most other colors I have from them on any paper I try. They initially appear to stay put, but over the course of 10 minutes or so, I'd gradually lose my careful gradients as color spreads to the edge of washes. Since PBR25 is very rich and it's a staining color, once it's dry, you will not be able to lift or erase it easily. It is a completely transparent color with little to no granulation texture. It's better for layering and glazing techniques than most textural earth browns like Burnt Sienna's made from PBR7 or Red Iron Oxide PR101. While there are transparent options for those pigments, they tend to be only semi-transparent in comparison. They don't usually layer quite as cleanly or reach as dark of a value. Some of them can be very textural and semi-opaque. In the bottom right box of my swatches, you'll see a stripe of color that is a second full strength layer of the paint, showing how deep of a value this color can reach. Transparent colors create darker values as you layer them. When used over the top of other dry colors in a painting, the lower layers will still be visible. The more opaque a color is, the more it just covers up the previous layer. On my swatches, that presents as both layers looking the same, no matter how many full strength stripes are applied. PBR25 has a remarkably wide value range from dark to light, reducing the need to add any secondary colors to achieve deeper values while painting. I feel like PBR25 is a little underappreciated as a pigment. It's not talked about nearly as much as other cheaper brown pigments, and it's absent from most pre-made pan sets aside from Mission Gold. This color is only available in a relatively small selection of brands. It's not an absolutely vital pigment, but it is a useful one. I recommend it if you struggle with mixing browns or you tend to paint subjects this color may be a good match for. I enjoy it for certain animals and birds and even mixed with reds for floral shadows. 
PBR 25 is also great if you just want a quick way to mix neutral grays by adding it to blues, or you want an incredibly transparent brown for layering and glazing effects. Being so transparent, this color is great for line and wash as it will never cover up your pen marks. This pigment is often ignored during initial palette setup, especially since primary trios of magenta, yellow, and blue could be used to mix a wide range of browns. PBR 25 is also frequently passed up in favor of more versatile browns like burnt sienna and umbers, which may apply to a greater number of subject matters such as landscapes. That being said, over the years, I have found myself repeatedly adding it to new palettes I set up, particularly when I'm building an extended collection of useful colors where my set has branched out past what I consider my core most used 12 to 24 colors. This pigment also has superior light fastness compared to many reds and violets that may be required to replicate it in mixtures. The next closest color match is PBR 23 Transparent Brown by Roman Schmal. I wish Roman would make a PBR 25 as I find it to be a little more unique and less orange leaning like PR 101. PBR 25 also layers a bit more smoothly and is deeper valued than PBR 23. Funny thing is that Roman uses PBR 25 in several of his mixtures like Aquarius Green and Olive Green Deep, yet offers PBR 23 instead of PBR 25 in single pigment form. Maybe this will change in the future as Roman Schmal's color catalog keeps growing at a pace to rival Daniel Smith. Also odd to me is that Sennelier offers several PBR 23 mixtures, but not PBR 23 in single pigment form. Either way, these brand's convenience mixtures give you a good idea of how these transparent browns could be used. I sometimes add PBR 25 into color separating mixtures, as the super fine lightweight particles easily separate from heavier granulating pigments like ultramarine blue, cobalt, and viridian. Holbein makes my favorite mixture with PBR 25 called Mineral Violet, where it transforms what would have been a brighter purple into a beautiful, more muted neutral color. I started paying more attention to PBR 25 as a potential mixing color for grays and blacks after being forced to mix my own Payne's Gray, Neutral Shadows, and Bird Beak Blacks with a pan set I had picked up from Mesh and Gold. Their 12 pan set does not include a black pigment, but has two sets of blues and browns, a granulating set of ultramarine blue PB29 and a burnt umber PBR7, which is my normal go-to mixture for gray to black. But the set also had a smooth alternative, phthalo blue PB15 and red brown PBR25, which allowed me to mix transparent black to Payne's gray-like colors without any distracting texture. I ended up quite enjoying this combination, so I'll demonstrate how these two colors provide a lot of color mixing potential in this video's portrait with the butterflies painting. The bird painting will show off more variety using many mixtures, all including PBR 25 in each of the colors. The only bad thing I have to say about this color is it has a wet to dry shift. It desaturates as it dries, so while painting it will appear warmer, more red to orange leaning than it will once dry. This can be hard to anticipate and is similar to what happens in a lot of watercolors like perylenes and many browns or red iron oxides like Caput Mortem. Painting with this color requires some planning. I usually pick this color ahead of time for a specific topic based on how it looks on my dried swatch card. The middle value has the most visibly drastic change. It's still notable in any strength, but I don't find that the mass tone or really diluted values startle me as much with their dry shift. When I don't mind potential texture in a certain piece of art, I use granulating browns, especially PBR7 Burnt Umber, when I want a dark-valued brown. 
If I want to turn burnt umber into a similar color to PVR25, I might add a touch of light fast red, such as a PR209 or PR254, to push burnt umber more towards red. But when I want a smoother reddish brown, I really like the look of PBR25 by itself. It's great as a small part of neutral mixtures like olive greens, wine, or berry-like reds to purples. Mixing it with thalo blue for shadows or near black allows me to retain a hint of color, controlling if it's warm or cool with more or less blue to brown in the mix which can look a little more lively than flat black pigments. I'd love to hear if you have a PBR25 on your palette or if you're considering it. And if not, which other pigments are your favorite for creating rich, dark valued, transparent browns? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent light fast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.